Hi, I am Professor Pravin Parmar, and this is an introductory session of business analytics. So let's we start this session. First, we understand the various subdomain of data science. Business analytics is also one of the domain of data science. So. as you see here the data science process in the whole data science process how does it work we see first we collect the data so there are various way to collect the data one of them is to through the questionnaire we could collect the data that is a very simple process everybody knows it another is uh, sensor generating data you know that the sensors in machines or somewhere else it automatically generate the data uh, through the sensor and we collect that data okay also through some software or the web application or the mobile application we also collect the data okay so there are various source of collecting of data okay and then the second stage of data science process is the cleaning of data so whenever we get data it does not mean that it is a clear clean data sometimes we have to clean the data we have to um, fill the missing values uh, we have to uh, remove the outliers or some other sort of things which are there in data data cleaning in the data cleaning there are various things we do in the data cleaning suppose uh, we have a um, column we are age of the people is mentioned but along with that age they are also writing years so it is uh, basically a character or the string so whenever we perform any calculation we it 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 does not work so what we do we remove that years from um, that particular column we just keep the numbers only so that is a uh, one sort of cleaning process there is various task in the cleaning okay then we have exploratory data analysis we explore the data okay and uh, we find out the relation uh, between two variables or multiple variables the effect of uh, different variables on a particular variable what is the effect and then also we find out the univariate analysis of each variable okay that is uh, the first part of exploratory data analysis uh, we will discuss later about this sort of analysis and uh, after exploratory data analysis we forward to model building where the predictive analysis starts okay then model deployment we have to deploy that model in some software some web applications this now we see what is uh, statistics what is data analytics what is business analytics what is bi analytics what is data science so we want to understand these all things one by one because the in core of data science there is statistics and mathematics so first we understand what is statistics basically so statistics is a science and art of collecting classifying computing analyzing interpreting and presentation of data and its insights here you see it is a science and an art also so it through the statistics knowledge we know how to collect data we are to collect data from whom to collect data okay then we classify the data whether it is categorical it is ordinal it is orderable it is binary it is interval scale or ratio scale whatever we classify the data and then we compute the statistics whatever the statistics uh, we require we compute through this mean mode median standard deviation mean absolute deviation correlation analysis this all be performed through the computation through the computation we get some results in the text or the number format and then through the analyzing process analysis is the thought process okay we analyze that uh, value what does it mean yeah. and then we interpret it yeah. 
the complete meaning of that value what does it indicate in so that we uh, do through the interpreting it and presenting of data and its insights the last task so this is the ro uh, role of statistics uh, because it is the it is in the core it is science and art now we try to understand why it is science okay so here one small data set is given and uh, i want to know what would be the mean of this data so if you calculate the mean of this data if you are not performing any calculation mistake so we all will get mean 8 which is correct okay so we are all getting the same mean what is the reason behind that it doesn't mean that i am more experienced than you my mean would be better than your mean it doesn't mean that so here it is a science there is some method by which we calculate this so somewhere we are using some method so that is the science so that's why statistics is a science okay second thing we see why it is an art suppose we have to interpret this glass of water how do you interpret this glass of water so some may say that it is half filled with water some may say that it is half empty but one experienced person who is experienced in analysis he will reply in a different manner okay he will reply like this this glass is full half with water and half with air so this is the correct interpretation of this glass of water so in this way it is an art because art always always require the experience or the practice okay now we see the definition of data analysis what is data analysis data analysis is a process as we have seen the statistics is a science and art so data analysis is a process of inspecting the data so there is a very big amount of data you could not inspect in one glimpse of data so you have to to inspect the data with the help of certain tool and certain statistics okay you could inspect that data you could understand the nature and behavior of the variables and these all things so inspecting the process of inspecting the data cleansing the data how to clean the data you know this is the process transforming the data you are aggregating something like you have a daily sales you know minute to minute and then you want day wise sales so you will transform that uh, uh, event wise sale to the daily sale so that is the transforming of the data and modeling data uh, with the goal of discovering useful information you know whatever the information you can get out of the data and informing conclusions and supporting decision making you know so we have to find out the conclusion out of that information and which may support in decision making okay this is the data analysis which is a process you know process of inspecting cleansing transforming and modeling data okay now we see where does it focus the data analyst focus encompasses a range of analytical techniques including statistical analysis data mining and machine learning to uncover patterns and trends okay so we use a wide range of analytics techniques okay uh, including statistical analysis as i explained you and data mining and machine learning also to uncover the pattern and trends what are the patterns in the data we are getting what are the trends the data is showing so we focus on that okay then what is the purpose generally focuses on extracting insights from data whether for business scientific or research purposes so data analyst play a role in every field you know without a specific emphasis on business strategy okay so this is uh, the clear cut uh, we can say that uh, neutrally the data analyst find out the 
insights, patterns or trends. What about the business analytics? Business analytics refers to the practice. As you have seen, statistics is a science and art. Data analysis is a process. Business analytics is a practice of using data analysis and statistical methods to gain insights and make informed decision in a business context. Okay. It involves the exploration, interpretation and visualization of data to uncover patterns, trends and correlations that can help organizations optimize their operations, improve performance and achieve their goals. So it is only with the business context we do the analysis. Okay. So the focus we see here, it focuses on the application of advanced statistical and quantitative methods to identify trends, patterns and future business scenarios. And now purpose, its purpose to support strategic decision making, optimize process and provide actionable insights from organizational success. Now there is one more term that is the business intelligence. Business intelligence involves the collection, analysis and presentation of business information to facilitate decision making. Okay. We see where they focus. Primarily concerned with reporting historical data, generating dashboard and providing a comprehensive view of key performance indicators. KPIs. Okay. And we see the purpose, the focus is on descriptive analytics, offering a retrospective view of business performance to aid in monitoring and reporting. So business intelligence generally required in a field of NGOs, uh, mostly do these sort of things. Okay. Now, the last term, which is the data science. These are all whatever we have gone through up to now uh, about data analyst, you know, <coughs> about the business analyst, about the BI analyst. They are all the subdomain of data science. So data science is an umbrella term that encompasses data analytics, data mining, machine learning, several other related disciplines. Data science is an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, algorithms and system to extract knowledge and insights from many structural and unstructured data. Data science is related to data mining, machine learning and big data. So it's a big umbrella under which this all domain works. Finally, business analytics combines elements from computer science, mathematics, statistics, domain knowledge and data engineering to analyze and interpret complex data sets. Okay. Business analytics is the systematic use of data, statistical analysis and quantitative methods to drive informed business decision making. It involves the exploration, interpretation, and communication of meaningful patterns and trends within data sets. So this is basically the work of business analyst. Okay. Now, as you know that business analyst is a sub domain of data analyst. Okay. So we see what is data. There are two words, data and analytics. You know? data analysis. So first we understand data, then we understand the analysis. So here I would like to define what is data. Data refers to raw facts, statistics or pieces of information collected or stored for reference or analysis. It can be in various forms such as number, text, images, audio or video. Essentially data is the foundation of all information and, and it becomes meaningful when it is processed. Okay, analyze and interpret it to drive insights or make decisions. Data can be structured, semi-structured or unstructured depending on how it's organized and formatted. It's critical asset in today's digital age, driving advancement in technology, business, science and various other fields. So this is the basically uh, we can 
understand about the data what is data and uh, now we see what is the classification of data in context of data or business analyst okay so i am here talking about the structured data only okay so structured data we have divided in two part number one is categorical data number two is numeric data if i talk about the categorical data again we have divided these in two part one is nominal data second one is orderable data so we will try to understand what is nominal data what is orderable data later after completing this slide i will explain you that and numeric data we have divided in four parts number one is binary data second is ordinal data third one is interval data fourth one is ratio data interval and ratio both are scale and we say it is a scale and again we have divided this in two part that is discrete and continuous data so this is the hybrid classification of data which we use generally in the data and business analytics domain now i would like to explain you about uh, this categorical data what is nominal data what is orderable data what is binary ordinal interval ratio scale discrete and continuous so we see this on our whiteboard categorical data in the categorical data we have one first one is nominal nominal data in the nominal data i take one example of uh, gender in gender we have three categories suppose we have male female and transgender okay i will explain it later now i want to tell you first at the first now i will explain you first about the orderable data then after that you can better understand the nominal data so we write here orderable data here in orderable data i take the example of uh, education okay in education i take the different categories illiterate <coughs> primary i am randomly writing this levels now phd graduate middle post graduate high school and inter school so we see how many categories are here so as you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 now i i ask you to give the order from lowest to the higher education so i think that the person who is literate having some knowledge will give the same order here i give the order suppose the if somebody is giving the order like illiterate one primary two everybody will give the same order middle three high school four inter five graduate six postgraduate seven and phd nine 
uh, sorry, eight. So the same order, everybody will give the same order. So we can give order to these categories. So it is a orderable. But if I ask you to order this gender, male, female, or transgender, so everybody will give the different order. Somebody will give male one, two, three. Some give in this manner. Some give in this manner. So there may be the. There is not possibility of the uniform or the same order. Okay, but in education level, everybody will give the same order. So there are two types of categorical data. One is the nominal, other is the orderable. Okay. So this we understand. Uh, so what happens when we uh, give order to the this sort of categorical data? So that order we use only this numeric value that is called the ordinal data. That is called ordinal data. Okay, that is called ordinal data. So I again come to my slide and I explain you some other things. So nominal I explained you, orderable I explained you. Now ordinal I have also explained you when we use the numeric value of order, orderable data that is called the ordinal data. Binary is in the form of 0 and 1 only. Intervent ratio is the data like age, income, distance, these are all interval data or the ratio data. So there is a difference between interval ratio data we will see later on about this and these two are scale, other are data. Ordinal is not a scale, okay, it is a data, binary is a data. And so interval ratio only scale and this again we classify classify in two part discrete and continuous so i will explain later about this about the discrete and continuous okay now we see the classification of analysis analysis refers to breaking a whole into its separate components for individual examination analysis means to do the postmortem okay and data analysis is a process for obtaining raw data and converting it into information useful for decision making by users. Okay. Data is collected and analyzed to answer questions, this hypothesis or dis disparate theories. So here I will explain you the classification of analysis. As you see we have classified this analysis in four parts. Number one is descriptive. In the descriptive, second one is inferential or diagnostic, third one is predictive, fourth one is prescriptive and predictive, if you see the descriptive, it means what is, whatever thing in your data, how many males are there, how many females are there in some conference like that. So that is the descriptive analysis. Uh, their average in an organizations, uh, the average income of male and average income of female, uh, whatever the statistics, uh, mean mode, median, standard deviation, range, coefficients, and these all is the descriptive analysis. Inferential analysis, why it is? It is the study of cause and effects. So we diagnostic why it happens. And, uh, so that is what, why it is. Third one is predictive predict is what will be okay it will predict if uh, you are you have a data of rain of last 10 years 20 years and the data of crop also of that region so you could easily predict as per the rain what would be the crop production this year you know, amount of rain so that is a predictive analysis and this predictive analysis is basically the machine learning starts from here. Okay. Fourth one is our prescriptive analysis. What should be? Suppose we have, it doesn't mean that only rain affects the crop production. There are many other factors which affect the crop production. 
like the soil quality, seed quality, pesticides, fertilizers, sunlight, humidity, you know, irrigation. So this all also affects the crop production. And if we use one artificial intelligence model, we develop one artificial intelligence model. So we could ask them, suppose your predictive model exp predict that uh, you have input all the variables, values, uh, like the soil quality, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium content, seed quality also, sunlight intensity also average, humidity also you have fed over there, what fertilizer you will use there, what pesticides at what time you will use and the irrigation also you have put these all values and your uh, machine learning model predicts you will get 100 metric ton of the crop but you require 140 metric ton then what you will do at that moment we have two options either we could take the expert advice okay expert may be of two kind there may be human expert there may be artificial expert human expert means human intelligence you could ask through the you can ask through the experience former you can ask through the um, to the uh, agriculture scientist okay so they will suggest you your soil quality is this so you will use this particular fertilizer okay this particular seed you have to use so after getting his advice you can increase your crop production from 100 metric ton to 120, 130, 140, whatever. Same thing, if you have an artificial intelligence model already developed, you could ask to date model. We have this, this, this thing. Rain is this much, sunlight is this, which is not in our control. So what should, what seeds should I use for getting the crop production by 140 metric ton? So that artificial intelligence model can prescribe you, can recommend you, you know, what uh, pesticides you have to use, what fertilizer you have to use, what seed you have to use. Okay. So if you follow those recommendations, your crop production may increase from 100 metric ton to 140 metric ton. May be possible. So here it is called the artificial intelligence. So this is this was the classification of analysis. Now I will show you the various types of analysis, how we get it. So here you see we have a movies data and we have the age of uh, gender of the audience, location, age and past movies you know, and Netflix or something like that. Okay. So we have these all information. So what analysis we can do? What sort of analysis it is being called? So I will explain you later. Now we have another data uh, about the sales of particular shampoo. The factor responsible for sales reduction. So what sort of this analysis? Third one is viewing websites today's traffic. Okay. So this is one another data we are getting and predicting stock price movement so this is another so we see what are the uh, what analysis we can perform of these four type of uh, data okay so you see about the descriptive analysis so this one today's traffic we are viewing the website today's traffic it is a descriptive analysis the current situation whatever we have so it is the today's traffic no past data required no future outcome required okay second we see the diagnostic analysis so here the factor responsible for sales reduction what are the factors which factors are affecting our sales in positive manner or the negative manner so analyzing past data no future outcome or forecast here again and predictive analysis predictive analysis you will see here the predicting stock price movement Analyzing past stock prices, analyzing similar stocks, okay, and finally future stock price required, okay. So this we can predict. That is a predictive analysis. Fourth one is the prescriptive analysis. Here you see about the movies data. Let's start with recommending moves. 
movies. So you will see the gender, location, age, past movies. These all informations we have. So the past, uh, the person has watched the horror movies, the future unwatched horror movies. This may be, but you see the similar people, the demographic of the people are same. So the similar people watch the classic movies. So suggestion for you, maybe the Godfather. So this sort of the recommendation engines works in this way. So it is a prescriptive analysis, artificial intelligence. Thanks.